the 2021 NFL season has not gone according to plan for the Miami Dolphins. Their 2025th overall selection from Alabama quarterback Tua Tungavailoa has not produced to the level most would hope and placed on injured reserve after an early exit during the Buffalo Bills' 35-0 victory during Miami 2021 home opener. Both offensive tackle positions have been underperforming, including the 18th overall selection from the 2020 NFL Draft Austin Jackson and team captain Jesse Davis. Also, Miami has yet to produce a consistent pass rush on defense, limiting a very talented defensive secondary production. But all is not lost for the 2021 Miami Dolphins. During their overtime loss to an outstanding Las Vegas Raiders team during Week 3 of the 2021 NFL season, they showed that they could overcome their multiple flaws with the play of clutch key players. The numerous bad play calls, blown pass blocking, and considerable blown coverage in the secondary were not enough to take Miami out of the game. With multiple chances to outright win the game, Sunday Miami was never out of the running to close out a win against an undefeated Las Vegas team. But with so much improvement from Week 2 to Week 3, the 2021 Miami Dolphins shouldn't pat themselves on the back just yet. The offensive line still needs improvement across the board. They did have an improved rushing output compared to Week 2, but their pass blocking needs help. 2021 second-round pick Liam Eichenberg who played well at left tackle week one against the Patriots, is trying to mask the right tackle position after playing on the left side his entire college career. Jesse Davis played well in spots switching to left guard, and Michael Deiter is still developing at the center position. Mental mistakes continued to plague Austin Jackson at left tackle. His poor pass blocking continued against a very talented Las Vegas pass rush. In one play, he watches Yannick Ngakwe go past him without any thought to block him. To continue their improvements, here are a few items that could quickly improve this Miami Dolphins team on the field going forward. Free agents. When it comes to Miami entertains to join the roster, one of two things must be present. Young enough to not be too expensive or familiar with Coach Flores. Malcolm Brown was cheap and young, Jason McCourty and Alandon Roberts knew Flores from New England. So, Using that information, there are two options that immediately stand out. Forrest Lamp and Jamie Collins. Forrest Lamp, at 27, is in the prime of his football life. This veteran guard could come in and compete at either guard position or just provide quality depth. But also, him still being available shows he can be had for a reasonable price. In 2020, the Los Angeles Chargers Lamp tallied 1175 snaps with only one penalty and two sacks allowed. Jamie Collins, better known for his time with New England than his recent year with the Detroit Lions. Collins' solid play could help the middle of the defense that seems to need help with stopping the run and pass coverage. Collins' three forced fumbles, one sack, and 70 tackles would be a welcomed addition if only rotational. At 31, his prime years are behind him, but his ability to quickly come off the bench and play in a familiar system for a familiar coach would help shore up a significant weakness. It would also be essential to note, Collins has some pass rush history, he produced 7 sacks in 2019, 4 sacks in 2018, 2014, and 5.5 in 2015. Trades. Trades are an easy way to improve your roster during the season. Players not valued as much as planned during the offseason are easier to part with when a clear improvement shows itself after a few weeks of gameplay. Players thought to be vital building blocks or insurance policies for injured players are less of a necessity. These are grown men who want to see their value grow before it is time to cash in their next contract. If not giving the chance to show their abilities during gameplay, frustrations can arise. Jamie Collins is a clear example of that. Cut just today since no trade partner presented itself. It is essential to be realistic when looking at the players who may be on the trade block or be pried away from their current team for the right price. Aaron Donald is not going to be available unless you are playing Madden. So, understanding that two players come to mind. Marlon Mack, who was permitted to seek a trade today, and Taylor Decker. Marlon Mack is a once top 10 running back. After a few injuries and the Indianapolis Colts drafting his replacement last year during the NFL draft, Mack has fallen out of favor with the Colts. During the 2018 season, Mack gained 908 yards on the ground and added 9 touchdowns. 
In his 2019 season, he went for 1,091 yards on the ground with another eight touchdowns. His between-the-tackles downhill running is the exact thing Miami is missing in their offense. Too many times over the last three weeks, Miami could not sustain drives due to poor running on early downs. Taylor Decker is a natural blindside protector. His 2021 season did not start well, with a finger injury Decker was placed on IR and rookie tackles Penny Sewell replacing him at his natural position of left tackle and playing at a high level. It is not a sure thing Detroit would even move on from the former first-rounder, but Miami still equipped with tradable players and draft capital could help them see, it is better to get young players with upside over more established players who will be costly. Decker in 2020 only had two sacks and six penalties over 1048 snaps. His 82.0 PFF grade would be almost double any current Miami offensive tackle. At 28 years old, there is still plenty of football left ahead of him. He would step in and instantly be the best offensive lineman on the team and be an excellent example for Miami's countless offensive linemen with three or fewer years in the league. Coaching. The last accessible item that can be changed to improve the 2021 season for the Miami Dolphins is coaching. There are too many snaps where Miami players have mental mistakes that lead to a poor play with damning consequences. Whether it is Jesse Davis watching the defender lined up in front of him take out his quarterback, Austin Jackson double-teaming a guy already blocked by the left guard allowing a Pro Bowl pass rusher to go free, or Jacoby Brissett throwing the ball in his end zone to a guarded Jalen Waddell for an easy safety that led to significant momentum swing for a Las Vegas team that was down but 14. Coaching situational football should be the continuous theme to improve over the coming weeks. Miami coaching staff has shown a poor offensive game plan to help cover up apparent flaws and called plays where there is no chance at a positive play. But with two new offensive coordinators, this coaching staff is developing just as much as the players on the field. Miami showed a much better ability to move the ball downfield compared to weeks one and two but still needs help continuing drives. The run blocking improvements were a welcome change but not breaking 100 yards passing until the end of the third quarter was a troubling sight. Similarly, Miami once elite third down defense seemed to be a considerable liability so far this season. Solid plays on early downs have led to false hope as Miami is being beaten on third downs at an alarming rate. Lack of consistent pass rush and an exposed soft middle in the defense has allowed other teams to convert on over 59% of their third down attempts. In all, the Miami Dolphins are aware of their glaring issues. This front office can and probably will address the many problems facing this young team. With help from the coaching staff, Miami has a chance to close the small gap in the race for the AFC East. Only a single game back, this season is far from over.